This is KGW News at Noon. We begin where we should today with the Western Conference Finals. In just a couple of hours, Blazers fans will be filling the Rose Quarter to watch Game 1 against the Golden State Warriors. Thanks for being with us today. I'm Chris Willis. Tim Gordon begins our coverage today. And Tim, that's going to be a great place to watch the game, but you've got some also top picks for fans who want to get together and watch at other spots. Yeah, Chris, we do, but you know, the Rose Quarter Commons is certainly the top pick. You got Dr. Jacks here for food and drinks. You got the fountain here, lots of room to spread out. You got a big stage and an even bigger screen, a 30-footer. It should be a lot of fun. It's a proven fact that Blazers fans like to get together, even when the game's not in Rip City. Spirit of 77 is probably the most Blazers-oriented sports bar in town. Game 7 against Denver was a crazy good time there. Woo, go but there are other choices too. In Northwest Portland, the On Deck Sports Bar and Grill is always good. In Southeast, Lad Tap House always has it going on with so many screens you won't have a bad view anywhere. And also in Southeast, Century has a big screen set up with some bleacher seats to give you a mini arena feel. But nobody's going to beat the 30-foot screen outside Moda Center. There will also be some fan favorites here at the Commons to add to the playoff vibe. We're going to have a couple of our broadcasters here, Jordan Kent, Lamar Hurd are going to be here. They're going to break down the game a little bit for us. We're going to have Blazer dancers. We're going to have the stun team. Blaze the Trail Cat's going to be here. we got face painting. We've got character artists. We're going to have lots of games and some giveaways going on as well. But really, it's an opportunity for Blazer fans just to get together. And if it rains a little, so what? We're used to it. Yeah, and just to prove uh, that that's the case, this starts at 5 o'clock, rain or shine. Guys, I'm not afraid of a little water. I'll come through and just say, go Blazers! Hey, that was way too easy. I got through without getting touched. Yeah, starts at 5 o'clock, and a couple things to think about. Free parking, so that's really great. No cans or bottles or ice chests in this area. Guys, back to you. Makes sense. It's going to be raining. Raining threes from Lillard tonight. All right, in Oakland. Thank you, Tim. Boy, that's going to be fun. Let's go to Chris McGinnis now. Chris, for anyone planning to watch the game at Moda Center tonight, can we expect more rain? Rain in threes, yes, yeah. but will it be raining? I don't think so. Let's go ahead and check out radar over the last 60 minutes. We have had a steady round of light rain push through the area this morning, but you can already see we're on the back edge of that steady stuff. There are still a few sprinkles offshore. But the satellite imagery even starts to show some breaks in the cloud cover uh, not too far offshore. So with that in mind, let me show you what Futurecast shows us as we walk our way through the rest of our Tuesday afternoon here. You can see a little smattering of green on the map, but that starts to basically disappear between 4 and 6 o'clock about tip off, right? So with some luck here, I think we could be dry. We could be dry all game long for folks that are heading down to the Moda Center or doing anything outside for the rest of this afternoon. Now the wet weather is back in the picture the rest of the week and we'll look at that in a minute. But as far as today is concerned, here you go. Uh, we're going with showers diminishing at three o'clock with the temperature hovering around 60 uh, tip off right around six or so. I think mostly cloudy and that should be a, a sun, not a <laughs> not a moon. We will see some sun breaks out there before the day is done. Your full forecast, Chris, that's coming up in just a few minutes. Oh, it's going to be a party down there. All mm -hmm. right, Chris, thank you. Other news at noon, education in Oregon will soon be getting a big financial boost. A bill that would raise $2 billion for Oregon schools is headed to the governor's desk, but the passing of that bill came at a cost. Christine Pitawanich is here to explain. And Christine, that education bill was passed, but only after two other bills were dumped. And Chris, that is the frustrating part for many people who backed the two bills. There are a couple of the most high profile bills this session. So here's what happened. Last week, Senate Republicans were a no show, refusing to participate in a planned vote on the Student Success Act, which would raise $2 billion for education through a tax on some businesses. To get Republicans back into Senate chambers to vote on that bill, Democrats agreed to drop the vaccine exemption bill that would have removed the non-medical vaccine vaccine exemption for kids. The other bill that was dropped, a gun control bill that would have raised the gun buying age, imposed mandatory safe storage rules, and would have allowed schools and other public places to regulate who can carry a gun in the area, among other gun safety measures. Advocates say it wasn't necessary to drop both bills. Uh, so it's not an either or situation, especially when um, the Oregon Democrats control the governorship, the House and the Senate. 
On Twitter, Governor Kate Brown made a comment about the education funding bill, saying, quote, I look forward to signing this bill and working with lawmakers, business leaders, teachers and parents to bring this historic investment into our classrooms at this critical moment. We reached out to Governor Brown's office for a comment on the two other bills that were dropped, but we have not yet received a response on that topic. Back to you. Christine Pitawanich live for us. Thank you, Christine. And this is the focus of today's viewer voice poll. Do you agree with the Democrats' decision to drop the vaccine and the gun bills so they could pass education funding? You can weigh in right now. Go to the viewer voice tab on the KGW News app or kgw.com slash vote. Today marks day two of a hearing on a deadly fishing boat accident in Newport. The Mary B2 capsized on January 8th, killing all three on board. In this video, you can see the searchlights combing the water for survivors. Today's hearing is focused on safety research on boats and the different hazards fishermen face on the water. The hearing in Newport will continue through Friday. The Coast Guard says it will use what it finds in the hearing to help prevent this from happening again. That public hearing is in recess right now and will resume at 1 o'clock. We, of course, will stream it for you live on our Facebook page when it reconvenes. You can also find more coverage at KGW.com. Transportation officials are headed to Alaska to investigate after two small sightseeing planes crashed, killing at least five people on board. NBC's Gaddy Schwartz now with the latest details. A dream flight for a group of tourists ending in tragedy following a mid-air collision. This Otter float plane, filmed just days ago when operated by Taquan Air, was taking cruise ship passengers on a day trip along Alaska's coastline when it suddenly collided with another single-engine seaplane carrying sightseers. But to have an Otter uh, that went into the water, um, the, that aircraft is found fairly intact. But to have on Beaver, on the other hand, uh, has a debris field of uh, about 2,600 feet long. All of the passengers on both planes were vacationing on this Princess cruise line. The Coast Guard and nearby boats rushing to pull survivors from the waters in scenic George Inlet near Ketchikan, where the mid-air collision occurred. Taquan Air issuing a statement overnight saying they've suspended all flights and are devastated by the news, adding, we are in the midst of an active crisis response. Based on FAA reports, the Beaver plane is owned by Mountain Air Service, which has not commented on the crash. The Royal Princess cruise ship continuing overnight to Juneau, Alaska. Heartbroken passengers on board describing the atmosphere as very somber. Adventurous excursions ending with tragic consequences. NTSB is now trying to figure out whether those pilots saw each other before this collision happened. Back to you. I don't remember being in any pain. I just remember being totally shocked, like not knowing what just happened. That bicyclist is describing the moment right after a car allegedly hit him and then took off. It happened Saturday afternoon on Northwest Hillside Road near Clapshaw Hill Road. That's out near Forest Grove. David Embry pulled his bike onto the shoulder of the road to look at a map, and that's when he noticed the car coming right toward him. I saw a car coming over the rise, and I just sort of like gave a little wave like, hey, I'm here, how are you? Um, didn't think anything of it and the next thing i know i get clipped by this car the car's rearview mirror hit david's hip and his leg and the impact threw him to the ground witnesses told deputies they saw the suspect driving recklessly even swerving into oncoming lanes they say he was a white man with a mustache and authorities say the car is a mercedes convertible anyone with information should call the washington county sheriff's office we are continuing our coverage with the trade war with China. President Trump is claiming the U.S. is winning that standoff. Here's what he told reporters just a few hours ago. Our people, if they want, they can buy from someplace else other than China, or they can really, the ideal is make their product in the USA. That's what I really want. Yesterday, China announced it would raise tariffs on $60 billion worth of American imported goods. NBC's Tracy Potts now with more on how the tariffs could impact all of us. Check your wallet. New surveys show this trade war with China could cost the average American family $800 a year. Soybean farmers are already feeling it. China is their largest market. It just adds to the stress. 
China is playing tit for tat with the U.S., announcing tariffs up to 25 percent on thousands of products we sell there. Everything from luggage to frozen vegetables. China will never yield to external pressure. Trade talks are stalled. Nothing is scheduled. Yes, we're still in negotiations. President Trump heads to Louisiana today promoting natural gas exports, confident He's got China right where he wants them. We're in a great position right now, no matter what we do. Adding last night. I have a feeling it's going to be very successful. Investors aren't so sure. Now we're down nearly 700 points right now. The Dow plunged over 600 points Monday, its worst day since January. This is going to really cost American consumers and businesses a lot of money. And critics say. He's going about it all the wrong way. If this goes south, it could cost President Trump the election. So it could be a bit of a political gamble, but then the president's picking up support from people like Chuck Schumer, one of his harshest critics, top Democrat in the Senate, tweeting that President Trump should not back down on China. Tracy Potts, NBC News, Washington. All right, Tracy, thank you. Now to Eugene, where there's a new program to give people living on the streets a place to stay. Eugene police, along with community organizations and volunteers, have teamed up to build these Conestoga huts. They're being installed at various sites throughout the city. The idea is to give people transitional housing until they can find a permanent place to stay. The first hut opened up earlier this month. The majority of the funding for the program comes from donations. Sad news at noon, actor and comedian Tim Conway has died. He passed away this morning in Los Angeles after dealing with a long illness. Conway, perhaps best known for his work on The Carol Burnett Show. He joined the cast as a regular back in 1975. More recently, he made appearances on Coach and 30 Rock. Tim Conway was 85 years old.